This is the fifth and final section of Digital Painting 101. At this point you've made it through all the basic techniques that I'll use to make the following illustration. So in the next few minutes I'll go from this line drawing to this finished illustration. Now the format of this video is going to be a bit different. In order to cover a lot of ground in a short amount of time, I've done an entire illustration and then sped the video up and I'll be narrating over top of that video. Now it's going to move pretty quickly so you won't be able to see every brush stroke I make, but I made sure to use only those techniques that I've taught in lessons one through four. So there won't be any extra tricks or anything that I haven't shown you how to do. It goes to show that you can take simple techniques and get a lot from them. So as I work here, you're going to see one process over and over, and that's what I describe as temp layers. So this is where I'm taking a big soft brush, I'm painting way outside of the lines, and then I'm erasing away what I don't want. But the crucial part of this is that it's all done on a new layer. And I use that layer temporarily, make a new layer, paint on it, carve it out. And then when I'm happy with it, I'll flatten it down. So here you see that I am often starting way outside of the lines, and it's got a big fuzzy shape. But then slowly the shape starts to refine. Now it's of course sped up in this video. What I'm doing is I'm using the hard round eraser and carving that edge back. So that gives you that sharp edge that I'm looking for. So you notice as I'm starting here, I'm thinking of the large masses first. I'm not thinking about those small details at all. I'm thinking of the hull of this ship as a giant cylinder, and then I added on the wings. And here I'm starting to add on the smaller masses. So I'll add a light source, and then erase it away to reveal the shadow underneath. Once I've established the large masses, I can begin to add the specular highlights. And this, was, this is what really helps define the surface. In this case, it's got sort of a matte finish paint, so it's got a diffused reflective quality to it, which means that it does have a shiny reflection, but that it's diffused. So hopefully by now you've seen that really there's not a lot of tricks in this process. I'm doing one primary technique, what I like to call temp layers, as well as some on-screen mixing which is using the eyedropper tool with the brush tool to pick my colors. And that's it. Here I'm beginning to add the cockpit glass. Same deal, paint large and then carve away the shape. So I thought of the big glass as one unit and then later erased away the separator bar. And here I'm indicating what's underneath the glass. Now in a moment here, I'll reach a point where I've covered enough of the canvas that I feel comfortable in flattening the image. I don't need to worry about working underneath my line art anymore. I can work over top of everything and not worry about making mistakes. And from this point forward, I don't have the ability to use layers anymore. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be painting over top of where my lines were to get rid of some of them selectively. Part of attaining realism oftentimes is getting rid of your initial line drawing. And for this drawing, I want to keep some of that technical line work. It makes sense in the case of things with seam lines and panels, but I don't want all of it. So having a flat image clears my head and it allows me to paint over top of it without worrying. Once I have a flat image, it's also the time where I start refining the edges. Here I've decided to add some tail lights onto the shape. So I've used a big, soft round brush and painted some red, and then I am erasing out where I don't want it to be. I was feeling like the left half of my image was a bit too shadowed, and I wanted to bring back some illumination. Now I didn't want to take over the dominant spotlight, which is my focal point, but I wanted to have some sort of a complementary light. Now what I just did there was I made one detail object on its own layer, and then I used it in multiple spots around the ship. And this just helps me save time. So I could spend a few minutes drawing at once, and then use it on various parts of the image. Now here you'll notice that all of the painting that I'm doing is detail work. Before I flatten the image, I made sure that I was happy with the overall value. The image has to work at a large scale, 
before you can take it down and work on the nitty gritty details. So it's once I've established all this lighting that I'm happy with, then I can go in and noodle around on panel borders and put in the rivets. This is also when I'll carve out and refine the important shapes and let the other shapes recede into shadow. And since my process involves using so many soft round brushes, this is also an, a time where I like to bring back some sharpness and paint with some hard round brushes and some hard flat brushes. So there's not a lot of secrets to it. Just repeat those steps over and over. And with some practice, you'll be making images like this in no time. So now that you've gotten through Digital Paint 101, if you're looking for more information, there's plenty of it on the internet. I hope that you go back to controlpaint.com and check out all the other free videos that I have to offer. Twice a week, I'm offering new free videos on the blog. So come on by and check it out.